Hey everyone, uh, Todd Schutte with the Bona E-Learning Team. And I'm Dee Liston with the Tech and Training Team. Um, welcome to this month's webinar. Uh, today we're going to go over Bona Power Scrubber and in particular using uh, the Deep Clean solution for you know, part of your Deep Clean service that hopefully you're offering to customers. Uh, but we'll also see some other things that guys are using the Power Scrubber for out in the field. Uh, but Dee, let's talk about the schools first. And, you know, when you guys go over the power scrubber and or deep clean service, what's kind of the reaction from, from guys? Yeah, you know, some guys, um, they actually come to the school because they've heard about the power scrubber, so they really want to learn and make sure that we're going to go over that. Um, and then you have some guys that are just, you know, they want to learn how to sand and finish. But when they hear about the power scrubber, um, you know, they hear about the benefits. It's kind of like an aha moment, you know, when we go through the whole process. So, you know, most of these guys that, generally clean floors that may come to a school, you know, they realize, man, there's a machine that's actually going to extract the dirt from the floor. They realize the benefits of, you know, it's not how long I can be in the house, but how many houses can I clean in a day. So it's really an ancillary service that most guys are looking at to incorporate into their business. Yeah. And what about when they get it out on, I mean, when you and I started at Bona, right, when you had your uh, own contractor business, there was nothing like this really out in the, the field that guys were using. So I think even for us, it was a change, right, when this got introduced. But, um, you know, how are guys looking at it and using it now out in the field? Yeah, so, you know, back when I first started, it was the white polishing pad and a buffer, and you spray some cleaner down, and then you have somebody mopping up right behind you. So this has definitely been a game changer in regards to the ease of use. Um, and not only are guys using it as a, you know, turning it into a cleaning opportunity business to, you know, reach out to some of their uh, previous customers and, and giving them an opportunity to see what this machine can do, but there's also the contractors that are really focused on sand and finishing floors. They kind of look at it as, man, maybe we can use this as a way of really getting that fine dust up since the introduction of the uh, diamond abrasives and how it creates that talcum powder type of uh, uh, dust that this is definitely a machine that guys are really starting to incorporate not only on the you know a cleaning side of their business but also you know in their everyday sand and finish business yeah and one of the, the biggest opportunities for contractors right is the opportunity to get in front of your customer again because if, if you just stick to regular sand and finish even recoats right regular residential customers might get a recoat every five years seven years, maybe sand and finish every 10. That's not enough to keep you in, in front of them, let them remember your name, let them remember how great of a job you did. Um, so if you can work, you know, that, that deep clean service and whether it's, you know, every 12 months, every 18 months, whatever that might be, it just continually gets you in front of them. And a lot of people don't think that they need their hardwood floors deep clean. But as we were talking about earlier, right? He, well, when you clean your uh, carpet at home, you vacuum it. It does a good job of getting it mostly clean, right? It, it looks clean except for stains and stuff the kids may have, may have put into it. Uh, but once in a while you need the carpets deep cleaned and same thing with the wood floors. You know, just using the bone and mop and cleaner does a really good job of generally keeping that floor nice and clean. But, you know, we've seen you can go in and do a small section for somebody as a demonstration pull some solution out of that recovery tank of what you just pulled off the floor and people's eyes usually light up. Yeah, that is a good point because most guys, you know, I mean, when we talk about the business opportunity for these guys and, uh, you know, you mentioned kind of a, a glass valve where they show what the clean solution looks like. And then after they do a small section, they can show that homeowner what the recovery tank, what's coming out of the recovery tank, what's being pulled off their floors. And they're pretty amazed. Most homeowners think they're doing a great job, just the, the regular uh, microfiber mop and cleaner. When they see what this machine can do, uh, they're, they're very impressed as the, you know, how clean their floors are actually getting. Getting. Um, some of the contractors are also looking at it as, you know, maybe we can go in and, and offer this to homeowners around the holidays, you know, um, instead of having their floors recoated, which may need to happen. Sometimes a guy will go in and show them that, you know, we'll deep clean your floors, you know, before holiday parties, uh, before family gatherings and, uh, you know, things of that nature. Then, you know, they start to think about, man, this could be, and it's easy to use. I mean, the ease of use, which we'll go over a little bit later. I mean, you can, you know, get a guy right out of high school and just show him there's not many things he can do to really mess this up. And not only wood, you can also use it for any kind of hard surfaces. So, you know, when guys 
talk about, hey, there's tile in the house and you know, you have some vinyl in the house or some LVT, LVP. Um, you know, knowing that you can use this machine for that really helps keep other type of contractors out of the house that will eventually want to come in and say, hey, we can be, you know, the cleaning guy for all of your surfaces, not only your carpet, stone, tile, laminate. Uh, once they hear about this, then, you know, they're on board too, and they try to become the cleaning guy for that customer. So uh, I think that, you know, all of us used to hear that, you know, water and wood don't mix, right? And one of the big keys to this machine, and I still think it's one of the reasons why this is the best type of these machines out there is the way that it dispenses the cleaning solution is from the top above the brush and not directly onto the floor and that you can control it so easily with the levers here. So you can do, you know, full liquid, you can do intermittent liquid. If you think the floor is already wet enough, you can do no liquid and still run the brushes and the vacuum, but it's uh, how well this controls the water and how good the vacuums pick it up off the floor. Um, that make this uh, a really great machine for cleaning wood floors and kind of takes the fear away from us and, and from the contractors who know how to use it from mixing water and wood. But I think enough from uh, D and I, let's go talk to some of the BCCPs that we interviewed earlier this week, see how they've incorporated this machine into their business, uh, into offering a deep cleaning service and some other things they do with it to help even their, their sand and finish business and clean other hard surfaces. Uh, for me in the phone and power scrubber, the biggest thing has been the scrub and recoats. Being able to sell the guaranteed scrub and recoat system to a customer, and the fact that it will not peel or anything else, that is the biggest thing for me. I do a couple cleanings a year, not a whole lot, not as many as I thought I would. It always seems I am sand and floors and for a house, they're getting ready to sell. And I guess the information never gets passed on to the next customer whether I clean the floor, things like that. So with me, it's more the scrub and recoat. They really like that fact that you can sell them that, a guarantee that it will stick and you will not have a problem. And I have never had a problem yet with one. Hey, how did, with that, Aaron, how do you keep, because I know the, especially like the remover, uh, I mean, it can get things kind of dirty. So how do you, any special steps you take to keep that power scrubber clean when you're using the guaranteed system? Periodically, and every job's different. Some are not bad at all. Others, if you're taking off so much crud off the floor, it, yeah, it will clog the brushes up and everything like that. And then just depending on the job, whether I take it outside and have like a water hose hooked up to blow, rinse all those, the whole machine off if needed. So it's rare it gets that bad, but I do that at the end of every job, regardless whether it's a cleaning or a scrub and recoat. How about with uh, deep cleans? Is that something that you... Do you talk to your customers about it, um, you know, at the end of the job when you're teaching them or talking to them about how to maintain, how to take care of their floor? Does deep clean, a possible deep clean ever come into the conversation? It is. I bring it up on every one when I do a walkthrough, get the final payment, you know, give them a bone and cleaning kit, walk them through that. And then I also give them the information, let them know about the deep cleaning system and whether they need that later down the road, it's always there. Every once in a while, you'll get one call back. Most of them, I think, honestly, forget it. It's almost like I need like a little brochure to leave behind with them for that, I think would be a, a reminder. Almost like a magnet to stick on a refrigerator. Yeah, one of the things I would say you might want to, you know, take advantage of is, I mean, as you know, the Bona Agency and some of the marketing literature that's available to you where, you know, you can do a, a mailing uh, that can, you know, we can help create that and get that uh, a mail out done. Have you used a power scrubber outside of a, a prep and coat or a, a deep clean? I have used it on other vinyl floors and actually veterinary clinics with even different cleaners and everything. I'd have to look back and get the videos and stuff and how well it cleaned up, you know, sheet vinyl floors in a veterinary office that were almost like solid black and then they're coming back white. Obviously I wasn't using a bone of, deep clean solution i was using something a little bit more powerful put in there just to get all that crud off the floor but it worked great before i purchased the power scrubber initially because we wanted to get the um, guaranteed recoat system going um, but once we got the power scrubber we started doing those guaranteed recoats we found a lot of different uses for it so like uh when we put down like a our you know our stain 
we'll uh, put down like an intense seal or a sealer. We like to abrade that and then clean it. And we haven't found a better system for cleaning uh, the four in between coats than the power scrubber itself. So that's been a huge difference for us. It, it makes our final coats like gloss and like, you know, just perfectly smooth. Um, so that's what, that's what we use the power scrubber primarily for right now. Um, we clean a lot of restaurants and, as well. We got a restaurant coming up. Um, it's, it's, you know, a great money maker for, for restaurant cleaning. Cause you know, they, they try to clean their restaurant every day, but it's just that they don't do a very good job. So about once or twice a year, um, some of our past clients hire us and we come in with the, with the power scrubber and just, you know, clean up all their floors really nice and make them brand new again. So uh, in that respect, we use it a lot when we're doing the gymnasium. Uh, we use the power scrubber for every cleaning coat uh, after our, uh, after the initial um, intense seal that we put down, we would use the power scrubber for that too. So that really worked well uh, before our final coats. Specifically to residential deep clean, um, you know, is this something that you've promoted either after a, um, even if it's a pre-finished install or after a standard finish of a, a client? Like, are you trying to set up future business or, or future, um, you know, I, I guess that repeat customer? Is that something you do at the Power Scrubber as well? Yeah. So when we initially uh, have the consultation with um, the client and we go over all the different steps of the advantage of using a certified craftsman. We also tell them up front that we have a cleaning service as well. Uh, we can come back and we clean, we can maintain their floors, you know, you know, before the holidays and things like that. And then once we're done with the job, we also remind the, the client of that as well. So we get, you know, not a ton of cleaning jobs, but we do get, you know, six or seven every year um, out of all of our clients. Um, and like I said, they're just, uh, you know, they're happy to have their floors clean. A lot of them don't don't know that they can have their floors clean. And so the way I present it to them is like, you know, you have your carpet steam cleaned. Uh, this is essentially the same type of service, but just for hardwood floors only. And it's kind of funny because a lot of them are like, well, we clean our floors like they're spotless. And then the cool thing is, is you give them the before and after. And when I was first using it to clean floors, I did it for free. I came back and it's like, let me show you. And we would show them the, the little before and afters and they'd be like, Oh my God, that's disgusting. That's on my floor. And, you know, and then that would uh, basically that solidifies the, the, the sale for them to do that every year. Um, so that's, that's been a, a fun uh, demonstration for people to do. Hey Brent, how about on when you're doing uh, like the restaurants, have you found uh, that the, the regular deep clean with just the four to one uh, solution is strong enough to get all the grease and everything off the floor? Do you have to pre-treat it at all? How do you take care of those really bad, difficult situations? Yeah, so in the, in the restaurant areas, the main traffic areas, um, you know, is fine with just the, the four to one ratio. We just take half that jug, lug it in the top and put extremely hot water. Uh, the nice thing about restaurants is they have hotter water than normal. And that really helps a lot. Um, the really greasy spots right before the kitchen area, those areas, uh, they're, they're really bad. So we will use like a stronger concentration. We'll actually let it sit just a little bit longer on that and hit it sometimes two to three times, sometimes at an angle, uh, just to get that to break up. But it does, it, it breaks it up eventually and it comes clean. So that's how we've been doing those. Great. How, about, how did you first hear about the power scrubber? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I was at a, a um, at a, what do you, uh, one of your four day schools. And uh, I think you actually gave the abrasive talk at that school. Um, but I remember because I got that test question wrong because I didn't know exactly what the power scrubber was. And they said, you know, what's the best way to tack or to prepare your floor for your final coat? And I chose wet tack. And the correct answer was the power scrubber. So ever since then, I was like, well, dang, <laughs> That's, I got the wrong system set up. So um, it was actually because of that school and because of that test question I failed is why I bought the power scrubber because I was like, well, I better get one of those. And initially I thought, well, I could use this for laminate flooring because there's a good amount of people that want their laminate floors cleaned or their vinyl floors cleaned. And then once I started using it in you know, every step and every process of our sanding and finishing, I realized this is an invaluable tool. And so now it's all my guys, we hate moving it because it's heavy and our handles, it's, it falls over on us and hits us in the head. Uh, everyone hates it, but I tell them like, you know, you break that machine, you're dead to me. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's just the truth of the matter. 
What about, you know, instead of allowing the other companies to get in there that, that clean all types of floors, um, you had mentioned the vinyl and other type of surfaces. What about, you know, anyone that has tile maybe getting in there and, and showing them how well that machine can do even on their tile floors? Yeah, we, we actually clean uh, quite a few tile floors with that machine, especially like slate and uh, uneven surface floors. We'll do that. And I didn't even know it was good for that until it was an accident. I accidentally ran over into somebody's tile and it made like a perfect swath that was clean. And then I was like, well, crap, now I got to do the whole floor. Um, so, but yeah, that's, uh, we have used it for that uh, as well. We use it for a lot of prep before, um, you know, concrete new construction, you know, uh, they'll have, you know, multiple levels, uh, kind of condos and we'll use that deep cleaner to actually clean that, that sheetrock dust off the floor let it dry and then we'll put down our primers and and do glue down on that too so we use it for that too that, that poor machine gets worked well what about the brushes have they have you had to replace any brushes yet no the brushes are great um i'm going to have to on the red brush though pretty soon because um they are getting worn out but the white soft brushes they they work great and i think the only reason why the red brushes got wore out so fast is because I, I did a slate job and i used those for a little more aggression uh, aggressive cleaning um and I think that's the only reason why they wore out prematurely over the soft ones. Man, that's great to hear that you guys are really utilizing that machine. It looks pretty bad. <laughs> you should see it. It's embarrassing. The floors look great, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So once we started implementing it with more of the standard part of our service, bringing it in to do cleanings, but as you mentioned, between coats, not just with the water-based coats, but with the oil-based coats. After you buff, uh, anybody that's ever vacuumed and then tried to tack rag knows the residual dust that's still there after the vacuuming. And the power scrubber in between coats just takes care of that. It is There is nothing left. And uh, that really upped the game for just the cleanliness of our coats. So just little things that this machine has uh, shown me its versatility has, has been, uh, for, for my coatings, has been proven. But then in the residential world, I had heard of a, a man doing, takes the existing floor that is being sold in the home that is worn and haggard and uses, I was railing on y'all's polish and how just a worthless product that it was and how, make, how it just makes my job harder in so many ways. And Jeremiah says, this man's approach with the polish takes the power scrubber and clean uh, the house what is being presented for market use the polish to uh, show the potential of the floor and then when the home is sold they can either elect to stand and finish to make it more permanent or bring the man back with the power scrubber to take the polish remover and remove the polish and put a proper coat on and uh, so having that that kind of a thought process uh, just it was really inventive and uh and with very little uh machinery needed the, the power scrubber basically took care of most of the business well what uh yeah. what's your wife been doing with it what's her what's her interest in it she is trying to establish a maintenance division but since most of uh well, it's beginning to be half and half the polyurethane versus the hard wax oil kind of floors and the hard wax oil floors are no nonsense maintenance, as you know, and you can <clears throat> elect to let the poly maintenance slide. But if you had someone in a scheduled capacity to come once a year or once every two years, just to give yourself a, uh, a clean that the cleaning crew perhaps doesn't do, that's that's the, the aspect that she's trying to establish is after the sand and finish crew has left, the maintenance division takes over and uh, brings, brings, keeps the floor in as good of a state as it can be. And uh, does that include, I mean, just like regular deep cleans? Do you guys, have you guys done a number of those and residential or commercial, or she's just kind of trying to, to look to start this maintenance program up for you guys? We have done, she has done for me, uh, commercial aspects in restaurants whenever uh, you know they start their mop water in the back and drag that grease to the front and it just makes you know a classy place look nasty and uh, the power scrubber was able to relieve that and it kind of showed the you know 
the failings of the floor finish. And then I come along behind and remedy that part. But she's done a couple of uh, commercial jobs and a number of residential jobs that either precede me coming in for a screening coat or are a part of my normal sanding process. And then she just takes over the because the house being sizable enough, I'm buffing well ahead of, of the power scrubber. And uh, then my assistant is coming along preparing for the coat. So it's uh, it's been really advantageous to me because my assistant doesn't have to vacuum. She has a helper to backpack vac the dust up from the buffer and then she runs the power scrubber and then they both fall in to do the edges. So yep. when I show up, it's been tack ragged, mopped, tack ragged and ready to go. You know, it seems like a lot more complicated since you're adding more individuals, but uh, it truthfully has streamlined some th many right. things. Yep. And the quality of the product is without compare. You know, I, I've had many old school contractors that, I mean, stand open mouthed and just be like, I've never had a floor that looked like this. And most of the time that's after just the first coat, you know, and after the second coat, they're just laying, laying down and crying about it. But uh, this is part of why, you know, the products that I use generally for sanding almost exclusively, I'll say, are your six inch papers from my power drive. And then for the coatings, we have the diamond and it just, the whole, the, the whole of the system brings all of these uh, steps to the, to the best end that it can be. You mentioned your wife starting a maintenance program. Have you guys, um, you know, thought about taking advantage of, uh, you know, sometimes we help with that marketing and sending that out to some of your previous customers, you know, a, a certain, just a little pamphlet of some sort to where that can be sent out to your customers to, to, to make sure they know about that service. I would be very interested in any help that you can give me. You know, my uh, technology and marketing skills are, are the last thing on my mind. I'm, I'm, doing the work and and it's really hard for me to slow down in time to to give the things like this which are vitally important in this era especially but uh you know it's also a learning curve trying to come out of the old way of thinking and into this new style trying to get myself adjusted to uh to doing it and also adjusting some of my clients Many of my clients are, are an older set that texting is way advanced for them, but increasing majority of my clients are uh, the younger set that looks for the social media influence, looks for uh, things that I can share virtually. And uh, you know, I'm missing a lot of opportunities with them in these, in these regards. I manage and maintain a lot of restaurants, uh, a lot of museums in our area. So that was something um, I was offering and going in every couple of months doing deep cleanings. Then when we had the pandemic hit, everything kind of just shut down on that end. So I was looking for different avenues and different ways to explore and use it. Um, one thing I really started doing was we do a lot of large scale installation and uh, we have a uh, multiple builders. We just install pre-finished solid glue down. Um, so after the guys go in and bang it up with their malls and, get a little bit of glue residue on it, we'd come into a pre-finished job and just hit it with a cleaner real fast. Uh, we found we were spending so much time, guys on their hands and knees, just like scrubbing a floor clean, um, that I was like, well, well, we got this machine sent here, let's just bring this in and see if it's gonna give us the answers what we need. It definitely does. I kind of cut the soap back a lot more, so I'm getting just more of the abrasiveness to kind of get it everything cleaned up and cleaned off. And that seemed to have really worked and saved me hours and hours of guys crawling around scrubbing floors nice. um, so you're saying after the pre-finished install go in there with that power scrubber exactly yep yeah so we've done it on multiple venues um and then like i said a couple of our guys that build like semi-custom homes where we do about 60 to 120 houses a year with them just come in on the ones that really need it um go ahead and clean the whole floor for them which I really, uh, I really like that part of it because with the restaurant slowing down, just kind of machine sitting around. Um, 
But now that the restaurants are picking up, I just had a project. It was a multi-phase restaurant we were doing. They were doing the second phase of the build out and they had a back area, which was concrete. We were going in and leveling and putting in some uh, BCT. And I went in and degreased it and power wash it. And then like right before I uh, put my primer down for my leveler, I went in with the power scrubber just to like hit the concrete r really, really good one more time. Um, I was a little hesitant worrying about the brushes getting clogged up or that degreaser doing something to it, but I made sure everything was clean. And I was really happy with how much dirt there was still on the floor and left to get out that uh, assured me that bond for the leveler before I glued everything over top of it. Um, so that's uh, another way I've used it, trying to push the boundaries of what that machine can do. Um, actually was quite surprised. It was probably the nastiest thing I've done with it. <laughs> um, besides going into venues who are hesitant about taking care of their floor and you run the first pass across it and it looks night and day difference in what that machine will clean up off of it. Um, and then, of course, I I incorporate it and sell it on every single screen and recode I do. Um, before I get to the job, that's the very first thing that we come in and do. I've actually got a project now we're doing um, where it's a custom house where they've painted the whole floor. There's probably 10 different designs painted throughout this um, the homeowner's house, um, trying to get different borders, different patterns, different spots that are faux finished and spots that look like tile. We're about to go in in partnership with them to clean it so the artist can come back in and redo it. And then we're gonna come back in after the fact and recode it over top of it. So we definitely try to think outside of the box to get that machine out there because it does work so well and it's such an awesome machine. Um, so that's kind of where we are with it. Uh, um, how's that process work with the uh, so you just you're deep cleaning the floors and then just doing a screen and recoat? Yeah, exactly. When I do the recoat system, of course, I come in and, and test it to make sure it's good and they don't have any toxins on the floor. Um, and then I just come in and completely clean the floor. I usually do that one day and let it completely dry, although it's still going to get up everything. I like to let it set overnight and then come in the next day and hit my light abrasion, which I typically just hit with a maroon pad after that. Um, once the floor gets nice and clean, no need to gold tape it. That stuff does a great job of cleaning it up. You kind of do it till it comes up and uh, come in, quick abrasion and and uh, coat right over. Any thought on a service contract agreement? Like when you're going in to do new jobs, offering a, a deep clean maybe once or twice, twice a year that's already built into the, the original contract? Well, typically when I go in, when I sell my initial contract, if they agree to do it a long-term service, then I give them a discounted rate from the beginning. Um, once they sign something with me that's long-term, then up front, I, I really take care of them because I know I'm going to be there for years to come. Um, so I say I probably have, what is it, maybe 10 restaurants that I do on the regular where I come in and just clean for them. Um, it was before it was just screening and recoding um, every so often. But since that, now that gets it clean enough for them. They don't let it get to a certain, they don't let it get to a point where it needs to be recoded because as well as that machine keeps it clean. Um, and as quick as it is, you can go in in the evening, go in at night, knock it out. And it's ready to roll the next morning. So the downtime and lag time is a lot, it's a lot better for them. Did you mention it in the restaurants? Are you having to make a, a stronger uh, mix of the solution, especially back near the kitchen areas versus in some of the common areas? Are you having to do anything different? Um, tip, what I do different is I come in and do a, like a pre-soak on it. I'll mix my own up in a spray bottle and uh, mist it over everything. So it's set in there for a while. I go in, get everything back down, clean down really good, um, and then mix up a solution. Um, it all depends on how bad it is, depends on the ratio. Um, but I've done it where it's been so bad where we'll come in almost maybe like three to one, um, three parts concentrate to one part water to get some of the stuff up, especially right near the kitchen where you get all that grease and grime um, and everything to lift that those chemicals up. Um, I've even used it on a couple tile jobs where it had, I just 
kind of throw it in there. They have like little tile walkthrough pass throughs from the kitchen and where they expedite to where they, they hit the floor. I've run it over that and it seems to do a great job as well. Um, I don't really typically sell that to people or tell them, but uh, if it's something I see, I'll run over it for them. Using different brushes for the tile? Are you using the red brushes or just white brushes for everything? Uh, I typically just use the white brushes for everything. I'll break the red out if um, if I see it's not really giving me what I need, but that's kind of rare. I'll usually let something set up long enough where it's going to break it down, um, take multiple passes. So the red brushes probably haven't been busted out too many times. I thought about trying to do it uh, on a couple of ePay decks, seeing what it would do to that. Um, didn't know how what like the ePay cleaner would do sitting in that machine, getting pumped through it. Um, I don't see where it would do any harm to it. Um, but I maintain a couple high-end yachts and stuff where I go in and scrub their ePay decks and re-oil it for them. Um, and the cleaner, once you get on there, it's essentially just brushing it. So those red brushes would probably work wonders on like a little ePay or uh, or teak decking on a couple boats. Um, I maintain some teak decking for the uh, aircraft carriers here in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, every so when they're in port, every so often I'll go in and, and re just scrub them and redo it. But throwing the red brushes on the power drive um, would probably give me some really good results on it. Yeah, as long as uh, that cleaner's not foaming up, you know, there's some agitation within that that power scrubber. If it's not foaming yeah. up to the top and, and kind of tricking that machine to think it's out of juice, I think you'd be good to go there. That's interesting. Yeah, or even I just sprayed it on and just used it without running uh, the chemical through the machine, just yeah. maybe putting the water in there to help agitate it and break it up. Do you, sure do you know if it's, is the cleaner water-based? Um. I don't believe it is water-based. I'm not sure okay. the property of the cleaner actually. Because they use a they use the power scrubber a ton down in Central and South America. Bona uh -huh. guys do because they have a ton of again eBay uh, decking and stuff down there, and that's a big part of their business is refurbishing those. Interesting. Yeah. Good. That might be an avenue I start looking into. Yeah. But I, I would think the cleaner would be fine as, as long as it's not a really harsh solvent. Yep. I mean, I wouldn't want to run mineral spirits or something like that through there or anything that's going to possibly leave a residue inside the, the machine. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that might not be a bad idea if you just spray it on and then use water in the power scrubber to remove it, you know, and the dirt or whatever it pulled up. I, I would think that would be fine. Do you all recommend running anything through it to clean the inside any? Or is it, if you're running just y'all's cleaner through it, it should be fine? Yeah, if you're running just the cleaner through it, it should be fine. The only thing that tends to get, tends to kind of gunk stuff up is when you're doing the guaranteed recoat system and pulling the remover in there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, uh, you know, use a sprayer, a pressure washer, whatever, especially on that recovery tank, just yep. to make sure that thing gets cleaned out real well. And you got to check your lines then, you know, make sure that that stuff doesn't dry inside one of your lines. Uh, maybe blow those out after you're done with one of those jobs. But yeah, otherwise it shouldn't be a, an issue. Yeah, cool. it definitely is. Yeah, we're, we use y'all the sealer and glue. I mean, a lot. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yes, sir. No, it's the best. So it's what we like to stick with. That's why we use you guys. But I'm a part of, part of the team. So big thanks to those BCCP members for uh, coming on, giving us some of their time and sharing their experiences again about power scrubber, deep cleaning, how they've worked that into their businesses. Um, for you guys unfamiliar with the machines, we just wanna go over some of the features and benefits now, and then we'll give you a few usage uh, tips and tricks. Uh, so first feature is just the transport wheels, right? Nice big transport wheels, lets you roll it across the driveway, sidewalk, up and down stairs, and then they easily come off um, to store them just up in the, the main handle here. Keep them out of your way while you're operating the machine. The other thing with that is, again, just your big handle lock. So this little lever right here, 
You can use it with your foot or your hand. Just kind of locks this lever in place so that when you do tip it back onto the wheels, it kind of keeps this a, a little stiffer just to help with that. You still want to be careful with it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't lock it in place super secure. So just be a little careful. And I wouldn't recommend having any uh, liquid uh, or at least not full uh, of liquid in your uh, recovery or your solution tank because guys tend to tip it back too much, maybe spill a little bit on the floor. Um, and then one other thing on transportation is just your, your dial indicator down here that really controls your brush pressure. But you can see this is the transport position. And what that does is it raises, actually lowers some wheels to raise your brushes and your squeegees up off the floor so that even if you want to roll it around, you've already taken your big transport wheels off, you want it to roll around on the, the job site, you can do that and it'll put those, put those wheels down to make it easier to roll. If I put it on my brush pressure, so you have different levels of brush pressure that you can put it to, usually for wood floors we're all the way up uh, because the bristles on uh, the brushes tend to be a little softer, gets nice full pressure on there, but you know you can adjust the pressure to some different levels in there as well. And what's going to happen there, as soon as I drop the machine down, right, now it's dropping it on those bristles and uh, those transport wheels are up off the ground, so now I'm just on my bristles. Anything else you want to add on those? No, I think okay. just the handle will go either way also when you're running it. Once that uh, transport lock is down, then you have an opportunity of running the machine uh, on either side without having to turn the machine all the way around. All righty, so now um, I'm going to talk about the usage of the two triggers that we have on the handle. What we have here is the gray trigger that will um, engage the brushes to get the brushes spinning as well as have the vacuum sucking up the solution. And that's all dependent on the foot peg that you have here. When the foot peg is level with the ground, then squeegees are up. So when you pull the gray handle, all that's going to do is allow the brush to, sp to spin. Once you put the foot lever you know, down, now that will engage the squeegees. So now when you pull the gray trigger, what that does is it initiates the vacuum. So the uh, vacuum has a chance to suck up the solution as well. The black trigger here, what that is, is your solution button. So what that does is that's going to allow the solution to spray on the brushes, as Todd uh, talked about earlier. Instead of having solution sprayed onto the floor, this will kind of engage solution being sprayed onto the brush brushes so that you have wet brushes scrubbing the floor. And you can pull that as needed. OK, so let's talk about the tank now and the different brushes. So one, your solution and recovery tank, uh, it locks into place. Uh, if you get it in the right spot, it'll click up and lock, helps you carry it a little more. Um, and then you can put it down on the far side. These latches come apart. Now you've got your separate recovery tank. This is just your solution tank. Usually what I'll do, because the handle just makes it easier, uh, when you're filling up the solution tank, you know, carry it into wherever you're going to fill it. Utility sink, uh, maybe the bathroom, something like that. Uh, out in the front yard at, at the hose, um, you can take off your um, cover here, put half a gallon of the deep clean solution in here, fill the rest up with water. It's a 2.5 gallon uh, solution tank, so that gives you your one to four cleaner to water uh, ratio. You can put that back in, you're ready to go. Some guys like to fill it with cold water, some guys fill it with hot water, kind of depends on the, the cleaning situation, uh, but you can do either with that. And then same thing, once it gets full, uh, and you'll hear it, the, the sound changes when you run out of water. Um, or when you'll see in your recovery tank, you've got a little float in here and when it gets high enough, it's going to shut this off so that you don't pull any more uh, product into your recovery tank. It'll give it a different sound. And if you just carry the whole thing into, again, wherever you're going to get rid of the uh, recovery solution, whether that's in the uh, sewer system uh, or back at your shop, or some guys take five-gallon buckets into the job site to take care of it that way, 
Uh, but that's one thing you want to plan out ahead of time is where do I have permission to get rid of the, the stuff that we're pulling off the floor? A lot of times it's going to be on the job site, just you know, down uh, uh, the sewer system um, or into five gallon buckets. But that's how I would take care of the recovery tank. And then I also make it a practice whenever I do empty out the recovery tank just to rinse it out real good. Again, it depends kind of on the, the process or whatever we're trying to clean off the floor. But you'll typically see, again, if we're cleaning diamond dust like we will be off of here, or especially if I'm doing the uh, guaranteed recoat system, um, I want to rinse that recovery tank out and not let the, the gunk and stuff build up in there uh, with every tank full that I get. So that's your uh, solution tank and recovery tank. All righty, so I'll talk about the uh, different brushes. So now that the tank is off, you have an opportunity to set the machine back. And while the machine is back, just a real simple um, switch out if you want to switch to the red brushes. So your white brushes actually just push down a little. It's kind of spring loaded. And then you can pull the brush out. And then you're ready to insert your red brushes when needed. And we'll talk about the different surfaces that you're going to uh, use for the, the different brushes for. But while we have the brushes off, here we have the strip which we discussed earlier where it dispenses the solution uh, directly onto the brushes. So, you know, no matter what brush you have on, the solution is always going to come out of this strip which wets the brushes which then spins on the floor. So, I just wanted to show you the easy loading of the brushes, spring loaded. You can put either brush in depending on what uh, floor you're working on. The difference between the brushes, your white brushes will always be used just for general cleaning um, urethane surfaces, pre-finished surfaces, um, it's a softer brush, whereas the red brush, you know, you could use on some of the harder surfaces like stone, tile, things of that nature, but it, you'll also use that as part of the Guarantee Reco system, which I'm sure we'll have a video out if we don't already on the Guarantee Reco system. A lot stiffer brush, so therefore you really wouldn't want to use the red brushes on a urethane finished floors, otherwise if you're standing in one spot too long, you could start to scratch that urethane, but definitely uh, can be used on some of the harder surfaces as well as with the Guarantee Rico system. With the white brushes, they actually have a, it's kind of a V-shape. And what that V-shape on the white brush is, is while you're cleaning surfaces, what that does is it pulls the solution back into the middle of the machine, which then allows the squeegees to really um, extract that uh, solution off of the floor and extract the dirt. So that's a real good feature for the uh, cleaning brushes to have that pulled into the middle of the machine. The other thing I'd say about the brushes and the squeegees, you know, this whole bottom section of your, your machine is kind of like your dust containment equipment, right? Uh, that's the stuff that's doing the work. So because it's a cleaning machine, you actually want to keep those surfaces as clean as possible. So your brushes in between uses, I mean, you may be able to just pop them out, rinse them out in a sink, you know, maybe with a sprayer, uh, but it's also something like if I'm doing deep, uh, the guaranteed uh, recoat system, these things can really get gunked up uh, and I'm probably gonna take them home, put them on my driveway, use my pressure washer to really wash these out good just to make sure that they're clean. Same thing with your squeegees, you can pop those off. There's a lever up in this hole Squeeze that, they pop right out. Um, again, you can take them, you can clean out the inside of the squeegees. You could even uh, take it off uh, with the mounting screws in here if you really needed to get them clean. Just clean this whole area out, especially if I'm doing the guaranteed recoat system, because this can really get gunked up. But again, between the squeegees and your brushes, two of the things you really want to keep clean on this machine. All right, so we'll, just one more thing we want to show you with the tank is when you're putting it back on, it's a couple easy ways to remember. It only goes on one way, but we've got some uh, alignment dots on here and on the tank. Or if you also remember that the filler cap and the vacuum pedal always line up as well. So if you put it on that way, it's always gonna go on correctly. Uh, but I think that pretty well covers features and benefits of the machine. Like with any machine, the best learning and stuff is done when the thing's running. So Dee and I are gonna turn this on, show you guys some quick usage tips, and we'll go from there.
Okay, now we're going to show the uh, operation of the machine, and I'll just point out a few things. Uh, right now we have the foot peg that's up, so now you have just the brushes, which are always going. Brushes will always go, but once the lever down, that'll uh, initiate the vacuum. And also, I just want to show we have wall guides on the side so that when we do turn the machine around and we're going up against baseboards, those uh, guides right there will roll up against the baseboard so that you're not uh, damaging uh, any of the baseboards with the guides there. Uh, one other thing, we have a cord holder here, which you can use or not, um, you know, just depending on how you're running the machine. But you, you can take that out and just kind of, you know, hold the cord like you would similar to a big machine. We also have another cord holder here that you can use, and sometimes guys will use it like a carabiner clip where you can put it on your uh, belt and then you can have your cord running that way. So, all right, so right now I'm gonna lower the machine and the machine is staying in the upward position because we still have it in travel mode. So that was one thing we discussed on the side of the machine where now that we're gonna run it, we'll take it and put it in run mode. And now I'll actually drop the, uh, the lever so that now we have the squeegees on the ground. And now when I go to pull the gray handle, you can hear that the vacuum cuts on. So we're going to have our solution button here. And there's a couple different ways you can run it with the solution. One, a contractor may hold the solution button forward and backwards. Or some guys will just hold the solution button while they're going forward and then take their hand off the solution button so that they just have the squeezies and a vacuum picking up the solution that just went down. One other option, if you needed more solution on the floor, which I'll demonstrate, you can have the squeegees up, press the solution button. Now you have solution being sprayed on the brushes. It'll leave a little excess depending on how long you hold the solution button, leave some excess solution down, and then you can allow your scrubbers just to scrub that solution without picking up the solution right away if you have areas that need a little bit more work. All right, so now we'll squeeze these down. We'll go ahead and run it forward. Coming back, I'm not putting any solution down, just got the vacuum and the brushes running. And then as I move over, squeeze out a little more solution. and then no solution coming back. One thing you have to be careful of too, if you're squeezing the solution button and when you go to turn, because you're taking the squeegees away from the solution that's uh, on the brushes and being left on the ground, as you turn, you may notice puddles being left there, but you can always go back over it so that you make sure you don't leave too much solution sitting on the floor. Another option you have would be going perpendicular across the floor. So if you have a, a slight micro bevel, a V groove, so that the squeegees will be able to um, suck out any solution that may be getting into the slight micro bevel, then this is another option of running it uh, perpendicular across the floor. Also, what we have here is a fine talcum powder type dust, which we talked about earlier. Uh, and this would be, you know, more of a intercoat abrasion, just kind of cleaning up that uh, from the diamond abrasives, um, we're running the machine just to clean up the fine dust that we have here. One other thing you want to be aware of, once you stop the machine, because the solution is kind of on the, the cavity walls of where the brushes are sitting, if you spray that, uh, I'm sorry, if you take the vacuum off, squeegees are up, and you can run just the brushes to kind of spin them. So this will be as you're working your way out. Now you can drop it and now run the squeegees. And what that does is that 
allows for the solution to kind of spin out of the brushes, come off of the cavity walls that are there, and, um, and then you can pick that up at the end. And so now what I'll demonstrate is taking the machine down the wall line and as you'll see the rollers that we have here on the side of the machine you'll see how they fit right up against the baseboard so that they don't damage. Another nice thing about the handle going either way, you can typically get up under, you know, depending on if you're in a pantry or you have some low obstacles that you need to avoid, this handle will lay down enough to allow you to be able to continue to operate the machine while the handle's lowered. A few things that I like to mention is, um, you know, when you're using the power scrubber to tack up the fine dust, like this, uh, you know, diamond abrasive dust, uh, we also use this in, in gymnasiums, we'll create what we call a safe area. So we'll run the power scrubber in an area so that we kind of leave ourselves a trail of not walking back onto the uh, dust that was created from the abrasion. And so on a gymnasium, we may come down the wall line and then we'll go right down the middle of the gymnasium. That way we leave ourselves a walking area in case we need to empty the tanks out periodically and also try to keep our cords in that area so that we're not continuing to have our cords you know, go through the dust and then put the dust back into an area that we just cleaned. And the same thing in a house, you know, you may want to, you know, kind of clean up a certain area that then as you're, you know, that way you're not walking into the um, dust and then dragging it back onto the floor. You can kind of start in that safe area after you clean it up, start there, and then as you're running the machine, you're always going to be on a nice clean surface. One other thing I'd like to mention is the microfiber mop, as you, you'll, you'll want to have one of these on the job site anytime you're doing a, a cleaning, uh, especially when you're doing cleaning, uh, intercoat abrasion as well. Sometimes when you have puddles that are being left, it's not a bad idea just to kind of go over that. That way you don't leave the puddles just kind of sitting there. Uh, you know, we mentioned that this machine alone doesn't put a lot of solution onto the floor. So therefore, you know, if you do have puddles from when you stop and start areas, wouldn't be a bad idea to get those cleaned up right away when need be. So now you've had a chance to kind of see a, a brief running of the machine in certain situations and some of the features and benefits of running the machine. Now we're gonna send it over to Todd where he's gonna demonstrate on an actual job site and in the lobby as well. All right, so now that we've actually come out on the job site, we're right in the, the Bona lobby here, um, commercial or residential, before we even start running the power scrubber, first we wanna actually get the floor a little cleaner than it already might be, especially dirt, debris, anything that might get caught under the scrubber and actually end up scratching the floor. Um, any sticky spills, any gum, any uh, greasy spills, things like that. So one, if it's you know gum or, or something sticky or gooey, uh, a nice plastic scraper uh, really helps. Don't use anything metal, uh, tend to get st scratch the floor up too much. Um, if we have you know gum or something sticky, we might even need to put some hot water on a rag, kind of let it lay on there, soften it up a little bit, and then we can clean that off. So a couple things that there might come in handy. Um, for residential, or if you're doing a commercial space that uh, lets people bring their dogs to work, uh, dog hair, cat hair, anything like that, always good to also go over the floor first with one of the, uh, uh, the dusting pads. Uh, because of their texture, they tend to really pick up dog hair, cat hair, and stuff really well. We don't want all that stuff laying on the floor um, for our power scrubber to pick up, just because it can tend to clog it up a little bit, cause some maintenance issues there for us. 
So go over first with the dusting pad, that'll tend to pick all that stuff up. And then working from experience, you know, kind of in assessing the floor, how dirty is it, how greasy is it. As you heard Brent talk about the restaurant, when he goes and does that, one, he uses a little stronger dilution than just the four to one. So he might use, you know, a, a whole gallon and then fill the rest of it up with, with water and really hot water. He said the restaurants tend to have really nice hot, extra hot water. That's going to also help take that, that grease and dirt and stuff off that tends to build up in those type of situations. Um, or you could also use, you know, there's some really good water-based citrus degreasers out there. You might actually have to pre-treat the floor a little bit with something like that before, ahead, before you go ahead and put the power scrubber on there because it might tend to uh, take too many, too many passes with just the power scrubber, just the deep clean in some of those type of situations. Uh, but first we're gonna vacuum. We wanna get loose dirt and debris off the floor. Uh, then we'll come back on the rest of the floor with power scrubber. Then we're gonna go ahead and work the uh, edges if any of those need cleaned up. So one of the things, especially when we're doing a commercial area um, or residential that Dee talked about is, you know, we don't have to suck up all the water at once. We can actually put some of the cleaning solution out there and let it dwell, let it sit there for a while if that's going to help loosen things up so we can more easily pull it off. But you really have to assess your wood floor before you do that. If I've got something, you know, wide open with a lot of cracks in it, I don't want a lot of water sitting out there on top of it because the water is going to go down between the cracks and then possibly cause me some, uh, some cupping issues down the road. So if you are going to let it dwell, just be real careful about how you do that. We'll put a little bit out here, let it sit there for a minute, come back and suck it up just to give you an example. But be careful when you're thinking about letting uh, the cleaning solution sit out there for too long. So we've got no vacuum, and I'm continuing to put some solution down until I get the amount out there that I want. You can see I've got some puddles starting to form. Big one back here. So again, this is what you can do to kind of let stuff sit out there, let it break up that dirt and grease a little better. And then when you think it's been out there long enough, now we can go back not put any more solution down, but uh, just make sure we're sucking it all up. And even though like, it's like applying finish, uh, every time that I can, I wanna run the machine in the same direction that the floor runs. But as you can see there, I went across the grain to just help pick up that puddle a little easier. But now I'm gonna go across the, or with the grain again to finish that out, just to make sure I'm not leaving any streaks across the uh, boards there. And then as Dee mentioned, um, you know, when we're running the machine too, usually when we're making our little turns, we're not gonna get all of the uh, cleaning solution back off the floor. So that's when we wanna come back with just our microfiber, hit any of those remaining puddles. And this is where I would have my second man on the job, 
right? He's going to be coming behind me as I'm working the uh, auto scrubber or the power scrubber, and he's going to be cleaning up any, you know, puddles or streaks behind me. He's going to be going ahead, maybe looking ahead, seeing if there's anything he needs to clean up in front of me. Um, but that's basically how we're going to work this job throughout is I'm going to hit the going to vacuum first, then I'm going to hit the main area. Now we've got the, the edges. After we get the whole main area cleaned up, now I've got edges. And it may be in some commercial places that you don't have to worry about them. I mean, people aren't walking, you know, right next to the wall. So this isn't going to tend to be real dirty over here. Obviously, in front of our uh, coffee station, the sink and stuff, I can see we've got some spills and stuff in there. So I am going to want to make sure that we get that cleaned up. I can't reach it with the power scrubber. So that is where a couple different things come in play. Um, one, I'm going to want to bring some, probably some Bona Power Plus cleaner. Um, you could even bring the antibacterial cleaner. That would also be a good solution. Uh, and some scrub brushes and uh, a damp cloth, right, to clean up after me, or I could also get it with uh, my bone mop. But here what I'm going to want to do, if I need to, is spray some just regular bone cleaner down, take my scrub brush, clean up any areas there. I might have to use my scraper here. Let that sit for a minute. There's a, a, a bunch of different brushes too that you can use. Some, I've got this one with bristles, I've got this one with a little scrubby pad on it. So I think both of those can come into play and help you out when you're trying to clean up stuff like under the coffee station and stuff here. And then I'm just gonna come back with, again, a damp rag, clean damp rag. Just kind of wipe that up to make sure I'm getting any residue and stuff along there cleaned up and that I've got a nice clean surface in the detailed areas too. So I'll go ahead and, and clean up the rest of this, you know, along the, uh, the glass wall there as well. And that's how we're gonna work the room. We're gonna vacuum first and or mop with the uh, microfiber uh, dusting pad to get any loose debris, cat hair, dog hair, any stuff like that off the floor. We're gonna remove sticky spills and problem areas with our plastic scraper maybe a, a hot damp rag to loosen some of that stuff off. We're gonna work the main area with our power scrubber. We may have to dwell a little bit, let the solution dwell and then pick it up for some rougher areas. We may have to go over areas twice or three times. Might have to use really hot water, might have to use a, a uh, commercial citrus-based uh, degreaser in some situations. And then we wanna look at the detail areas. So that's basically how we're going to work a, a commercial job with two guys, usually you know, one guy on the power scrubber, the other guy handling the detail areas, mopping up after me, going ahead looking at the detail areas. And that's how we tend to have happy customers on the commercial side. Now let's flip it over real quick to residential take a quick look there at how we might change this uh, process up at all, and then we'll go back uh, to the studio to uh, have Dee and I wrap things up. Okay, so now we're here on a residential site. A lot of the same stuff for commercial, right? We're still gonna have our plastic scraper, rags, uh, spare cleaner, just to go around and clean up any, you know, gum, sticky spots, anything like that. Uh, we've gotta go around first and either dust mop or vacuum to get the loose debris and grit and stuff off the floor. Um, we're gonna come in behind and clean up the edges with our scrub brush and our cleaner and just a, a, a damp rag. Um, and maybe the only thing different I'm gonna do in residential is take a little more care with some of the uh, peripherals like the, uh, the trim work baseboards, especially around if I have a uh, painted island or something like that. Regular baseboards and stuff I'm really not too concerned about. Uh, but it just depends on, you know, maybe uh, uh, what kind of house and stuff that you're in. But uh, baseboards usually, you know, take a little bit of a beating anyway. You're not going to beat it up with this machine. It's got a nice guide wheel on the side here that'll help keep you off the walls. So I'm not too worried about that, but just, you know, putting that little extra touch, that extra care into taping off some areas if they need it. 
So that's about the only difference. Uh, so let's get into this. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum, come back, hit the main areas with the power scrubber, hit my edges, get on down the road. So we'd like to thank the BCCs that uh, shared several ways that they've utilized the power scrubber. Really appreciate them taking the time to do that. And we hope you guys, uh, again, whether you have the power scrubber already, um, you're thinking about buying one, it's been sitting idle for a while, maybe through our tips and tricks, features and benefits, gave you guys some ideas as well as what the BCCP shared with us on how you can really utilize this machine throughout your business start some other businesses with uh, deep clean service, maybe even working on some, some outdoor decking. There's a ton of different things you can do to this to, to add to what you're offering to your customers. You may also be able to get some other uh, tips, tricks, ideas uh, from some of our other videos on our pro YouTube channel. And you can always reach out to Dee and his team at our toll free number, which is 800-872-5515. Let them know what you're thinking uh, and if you have anything else to share. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if there's other ways, as Todd mentioned, that you're using this, uh, please share that on our Facebook page, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can also send us an email um, if there's questions that you have or you just want to you know, send it through email at ustech@bona.com. And don't forget to keep an eye out for On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. It's an excellent podcast, uh, just a wealth of information you can gather from that podcast. And also some laughs, right? Uh, everybody needs some laughs in their life, especially these days. Um, but thank you guys for joining in. We hope the, the webinars we're putting on dives into a little bit more detail um, than a shorter video might. So we hope they're useful for you, but uh, we appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you guys again next month where we'll have some, uh, some new material for you.